16 or 16 by 16 pixel array that you process. With our solution running on an NVIDIA GPU, we can process every macro block on a frame at the same time. And we've done that just in a standard CUDA environment on any GPU that supports CUDA can take advantage of the software. But this is a transcoding application, so as John described, if you take iTunes today, we've got a little video here, a plush light that NVIDIA created. I'll show you a quick clip of it. It's a 720p video, so HD. And if you have this HD video, you want to watch it on your iPod, you can't do that today. You have to transcode it to a format that works with an iPhone or iPod. So in iTunes, if you want to do that, first of course you have to have bought the $20 MPEG-2 decoder plugin for iTunes. But then you right click, and I think this is a quad core machine. Okay, so this is a 3 gigahertz quad core, about the fastest machine that you can buy. Right click on it and say convert selection for iPod iPhone. And you kind of start to wait. Anyone out here who's done transcoding knows how long this takes. It's a, it's a very long task. This is progress on a two minute clip, a minute fifty clip. So you can imagine for a full length movie it would take much, much longer. Is, is that actually moving? It is moving. It is moving slowly. Look closely. So I'm just going to leave that and we'll be taking a couple of cores. I'm going to open Elemental's application. So this is our, our new interface. And you can select your file. And you can select the output device. And notice that we have a bunch of different output devices supported. The really nice thing about the power of the GPU is that we can transcode not just one video at a time. We can transcode multiple videos simultaneously. So say you want to output to your Apple TV, as well as your iPhone, as well as your Zoom. It may be a strange combination of, of devices. But if you want to do that, you could in parallel at the same time. So iTunes at this point is about 20% of the way across. We're going to hit go, and you actually get a real-time visualization as the transcode happens. Because the transcoding is all occurring on the GPU, so we're just copying the, the CUDA buffers over to the DirectX frame buffer to display what transcode is actually happening. This 720p to iPhone resolution is <coughs> occurring at about 150 frames per second, five times faster than real-time, and there, we're done. Hey, Sam, are you doing both of those on the same machine? We're doing those both on the same machine. We're using probably a little over one core for, for our processing, and iTunes is using two cores for its processing. But that kind of shows you, shows you the speed differential when you take advantage of CUDA and really understand the GPU architecture for video. So that's one video, or one demo, which I think will be pretty, pretty interesting for a lot of folks out there because transcoding goes from one of those things that you have to plan to do while you're sleeping or while you're not using your computer to something that you can offload onto the GPU while you're using your computer for browsing or email or, or work. Second demo is showing that same technology, and I might as well <coughs> stop that in iTunes so we don't want to wait too long. But this is Adobe Premiere Pro. This is a video editing application used by professional and I guess prosumer level editors. It's about a thousand dollar editing package. This is a, a clip shot by a, a NVIDIA employee, Mr. David Hoff, to my right. This is his, his boy. This is an HDV video clip. HDV is a standard consumer HD format. So this is about a, a 25 megabit per second video. Looks 1440. Like Say again? Looks like Dave's been busy. He's got a couple of little kids. Yeah, there's two of them in there. There you go. Um, but today, if you take this and export it using the, the built-in H.264 encoder that ships with Adobe Premiere Pro, you would probably get five to six frames per second of encoding for a 264. So it, uh, this is a 30 frame, frame per second clip. That would take you six times slower than real time to do the encode of this MPEG-2 file into something called H.264. Well, using the exact same underlying Rapid HD technology, we're going to select that select the file, export it as a movie. Sam and Joe, right? Okay. Should they get full representation? Um, our plugin, Rapid HD, shows up as a very standard, just with the list of other codecs you have available in Premiere. You can control everything just like you can with a normal. Select your profile, main profile, ABC intra, cabinet encoding. There's Basically, have all the controls you have with any other 
H.264 encoder. And when you got it all set up, you hit OK and save. You see this encoding of a 1440 by 1080 resolution image at 46, 47 frames per second. Getting pretty close to 2x real time, twice as fast as real time for H.264 high definition encoding. And this is Grandma's going to finally get to see what the grandkids look like now. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I, I take a lot of videos, and most of them end up staying on the uh, camera or on the tape because it just takes too long to compile them and put them together and rip them down to something that uh, Grandma can put in a DVD and play or something like that. And uh, I think this really changes the game. Yeah, um, we certainly hope so. And I think you know it's been a, a great relationship working with NVIDIA, and, and CUDA is a phenomenal platform for high-performance computing. Even high performance computing is a little different than your standard scientific or engineering applications. There's a lot of everyday applications that it applies well to, and we're looking forward to rolling out some products based on it. So, Sam, I had one question for you, too. Um, when you, uh, you know, this has been under development for a little while, and we had demoed it on uh, some previous class hardware, and when the um, GTX 200 GPUs came out and you started programming it under that, um, you know, did you guys have to go through and change the algorithms all over to um, work with the new um, hardware? Or can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Yeah, it's actually been very, very straightforward. Um, we do our benchmarking on on different GPUs, and we have a test machine, literally. We're a small startup company. We just swap in and out different GPUs and test the performance. Don't have to change anything. The drivers all stay the same. There's, there's no real work involved in, in switching between different GPUs. And you know, one of the important things about our software is that it's very important that it scales with the number of stream processors.